If you were a soldier in the North African desert in 1942, water could kill you faster than enemy bullets. Contaminated wells, muddy puddles, and stagnant ditches were often the only sources, and yet tucked inside survival manuals issued to Allied troops was a crude but incredibly effective purification method that most people today have forgotten. Not boiling, not tablets, not filtration. I'm talking about solar stills, what field manuals called survival distillation pits. A passive, low-tech system used by stranded pilots, marooned sailors and infantry cut off from supply lines, and it still works flawlessly today in survival situations. In the next several minutes, we're not just going to talk about it historically. We're going to break down how Dabipud soldiers built these stills, how they worked chemically and physically, and how you can recreate one right now with nothing more than plastic sheeting, a hole in the ground, and time. This isn't theory. This was wartime doctrine, and it may be one of the most reliable backup purification methods you'll ever learn. When pilots from the U.S. Army Air Forces crashed behind enemy lines in the Pacific or North African fronts, survival kits sometimes included nothing more than a plastic poncho sheet or clear acetate, a tin cup, and a shovel. Fuel was limited. Boiling required pots and fire, and fire meant visibility to enemy patrols. Chlorine tablets were issued, but in limited quantities and would run out quickly. The solution was simple. Let the sun do the work. The solar still method worked on distillation, which requires heating dirty water until it evaporates, leaving contaminants behind, then capturing the condensation as clean water. Instead of using flame, soldiers dug a hole in the ground, lined it with any available contaminated water source — mud, urine, seawater, swamp water — and then stretched a plastic sheet over the pit, sealing the edges with sand or rocks. A stone placed at the centre of the sheet formed a downward cone. The sun heated the contents below, vapour rose, condensed on the underside of the sheet, and clean water dripped into a container below the weighted point. The British SOE and American military field guides referred to it as a ground still, especially effective in hot climates such as Libya, Tunisia, and Solomon Islands outposts. Manuals from 1943 recommended digging pits roughly one metre wide and half a metre deep. In desert conditions, a well-built still could produce between half a litre to one litre of drinkable water per day. That might not sound like much, but if dehydration is killing you faster than hunger or wounds, a litre a day is the difference between life and death. Even more importantly, distillation removed bacteria, debris, salt, and even toxins from stagnant puddles or brackish seawater, something boiling or basic cloth filtering could not do. Soldiers learned quickly, in desperate conditions, a still meant survival. If you want to recreate this World War II survival technique today, the steps remain largely unchanged. First, locate a moist area muddy soil, or even a place where plants grow. Roots release moisture that the still can pull from the ground. Dig a pit around three feet wide and two feet deep. Place a wide mouth container or can in the center. You can pour dirty water, urine or seawater around the container inside the pit, but don't fill the container. You'll collect purified water in it later. Next, stretch clear plastic sheeting across the pit's surface, ensuring no air leaks at the edges by sealing with dirt or rocks. Place a small stone or weight at the centre of the sheet, directly above the cup, 
so condensation slides downward and drips into the container. Wait several hours. As sunlight heats the pit, water evaporates, condenses on the plastic underside, and drips as purified liquid. Yes, it's slow. Yes, it requires sun. But as proven in World War II, it works when no other method is available. For anyone building a long-term off-grid or emergency preparedness kit, including a solar still setup, is smart insurance. Pack a folded plastic sheet or survival tarp and a compact shovel. In environments where fuel sources are scarce or fire would risk detection, just like in World War II. This method remains one of the safest fallback purification systems. It requires no chemicals, no constant supervision, and it works using the same physical laws today as it did in 1942. If you're a survivalist, try testing your skills by running a 24-hour still challenge. Use muddy water or brackish sources and see how much you can collect. If you're a historian with a curiosity for living history experiences, replicate a World War II manual-style build and compare your results to documented field yields. It's functional archaeology with real life-saving relevance. What history teaches us here is that simplicity often outlives technology. War forced innovation through necessity, and many of those innovations fade once peacetime brings better options. But forgotten does not equal obsolete. Solar distillation remains one of the purest, most foolproof purification techniques ever used in survival history. Allied soldiers trusted it. Stranded naval crews used it on life rafts. Desert infantry swore by it when chlorine tablets were gone. If it worked under wartime duress with minimal gear, it absolutely works in modern emergencies. If this deep dive into World War II survival technology gave you a new respect for forgotten field craft, subscribe to Relic Logic right now. Share this with fellow historians, survivalists, reenactors, and anyone who values the hard lessons of the past. We bring history back to life, not just to learn it, but to use it. More forgotten survival methods are coming next. Stay sharp, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.